So today we're going to look at the next section, section 3.4 on the ellipse. So an ellipse is basically an oval and it could go, it could like lay on its side, like go horizontally, or it could be vertical, it could go up and down. Really good pictures of ellipses. So glad I can draw. All right. So when we have an ellipse, uh, oh, by the way, it will never go diagonally. I always get that question, but it will never go diagonally. Um, we get laid down. So there is always still a center. It will be in the center, which obviously I'm not good at finding. But anyway, the center, no matter which way it goes, the center will still be h and k. That will be no different. So whatever the x and y value are of the center, that will be your h and your k. Now, the long way across from the center to the edge is called a. Um, and so the all the way across then would be two a's. This axis is called the major axis. And the length would be 2a long. All right? So even if it goes this way, if even if it goes this way, this would be a and this would be a, it's just going vertically instead of horizontally. So going the short distance in this one, in the horizontal one, it's up and down. That would be the distance from the center to the edge is B. So that is called the minor axis. And the minor axis is 2B long. So again, you've got your minor axis. So B and B. They'll always be the same on either side. I just can't draw. Okay. So you've got your center, you have a major axis, and you have a minor axis. All right, so depending on the way that it goes, whether it's going horizontally or vertically, the standard form equation is different. So if it's going horizontally, like up here, it's going to be x minus h squared, that's really bad, sorry, plus y minus k squared. Now, because the a is going across, just like the x is going across, it's going to be over a squared. And because the b's are going vertically, just like your y-axis goes vertically, it's over b squared. Wicked, don't do that. And it always equals 1 always. Now you could reverse that. You could have y minus k squared over b squared plus x minus h squared over a squared. I don't know why you would, but because you're adding fractions, that actually doesn't matter. Which way it's going doesn't matter. So um, standard form um, when it's going vertically is um, we'll put it this way, x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to 1. And again, because the y and the a's are going in the same direction, they're over top of one another. And because the b's and the x-axis are going in the same direction, they're over top of one another. All right, so that is standard form. And again, it's dependent on which way your ellipse is going. General form is the same, like I said when we did this circle, is the same no matter what shape you're looking at. What changes is the characteristics of your A and your B. When we did the circle, I said your A and your B will be one. If it's a circle, it would just be x squared plus y squared, and then it would go on from there. If it's an ellipse, a and b are both positive, 
they're, technically it's they're both the same sign, but they're always going to be positive anyway. So are both positive, but different numbers. Okay, so it would be something like 3x squared plus 5x, uh, sorry, I don't know why I put it, that should be a y squared right there. So it would be something like 3x squared plus 5y squared plus 6x minus 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. But your a and your b would both be positive, but they would be different numbers. We're going to talk about something called focus points. So I'm going to erase all this. So just give me a sec here. So there's one more thing in an ellipse that we need to talk about before we start doing examples, okay? And that is something called a focus point. So if you took physics from me, um, in Kepler's three laws of planetary motion, one of the laws went something like um, the sun is the center of an ellipse, and um, the focus, the, the planets or focus point, I can't remember how it's worded, but anyway, it talks about focus points in it. So focus points are two points along the major axis. One will be on one side of the center, one will be on the other side of the center. So let's say here and here. And what focus points are, is um, if the focus points were, say, there, where I put them, they're probably not, but if they were, um, what it would mean is I could draw a line from each focus point to any point along the ellipse. So let's say I drew a line to this point, and I drew a line to this point, to the same point, okay? And I measured those two lines. And I don't know, let's say this one worked out to be 5, and this one also worked out to be 5. If I add those two lengths together, they make 10. That would be the constant for this ellipse. And it wouldn't matter what point along the ellipse I chose, the lengths of the two lines would always add up to be, in this case, 10. But it always add up to be a constant. So maybe I would draw a line from that focus point to this focus point. And when I did it, this would be two and this would be eight. It would still equal 10. Um, it's just the combination would be different, all right? So focus points are always along the major axis. And um, I just described what they are. Um, when you add up the lengths of the two lines, they give you a constant. So <clears throat> the distance from the center to a focus point, they call C. So from the center to this focus point and the center to the other focus point would be C in both cases. So there's a formula for figuring out focus points and it's A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. And we'll deal with that as we move along. Okay, we'll talk about how to do that as we move along. Okay, so I'm going to break this video up so that it's not like as long. I'm going to do, we skip example one because I've already just talked about it. Um, we're going to do example two. I'm just going to do, I think, one from example two and one from example three. They both have two parts to them, but I think I'll just do one. It should be good. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take, and then I'm going to stop and I'll record another video on the second part. Okay. So that it's not super, super long. All right. So I am on page 145 in your textbook. I'm looking at example two and I'm going to um, do A. I'm going to do example 2A. I have a dog trying to get in the door. All right, example 2A. They give us some information. They say the center of this, of this ellipse 
is at zero and zero. The foci points, the two focus points, are at three and zero and negative three and zero. The major axis has a length of 10 and the minor axis has a length of eight. Now, it does not ask you to draw it. However, I very often like to draw it um, just because it helps me see things a little clearer. You may not need to, and I don't really draw it with very much accuracy. It just helps me visualize a little bit. The center is at zero and zero. So that is my H and my K. So I already know I'm going to do X minus zero. So there's no, you don't have to do X minus zero squared. You can just do, you can just do X squared. And the Y is going to be Y squared and it has to equal one. The problem is I don't know what my A and my B are. I don't know which one is A or B. So that's part of the reason why they give you the foci points. The foci points are always along your major axis. So if my center is zero and zero and one focus point is at three and zero and the other one is at negative three and zero, that means the major axis is going along the X axis. It's going horizontally. That means this ellipse is going the long way. It's going this way. So how much? Well, the major axis is 10 long. So from one side to the other side, from one side to the other side is a distance of 10, which means my A is five, right? Five on this side, five on this side. And so that has to go underneath my x squared because it's going in the same direction as my x-axis. So if my a is 5, remember it's over a squared. So a squared would be 25. b squared, well, if my minor axis is 8, that means this is 4 and this is 4. And so 4 squared would be 16. The only other thing they ask for in this question is they want it also in general form. To get it into general form, the first thing you need to do is get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply this one by 25 and 16. I'm going to multiply this one by 25 and 16. And I'm going to multiply this piece by 25 and 16. So here my 25s cancel and I have 16x squared. Here my 16s cancel, and I have 25y squared, and here I have 25 times 16, which is 400. All I have to do is 16x squared plus 25y squared minus 400 is equal to zero. That is actually in general form. There just isn't an x and a y piece to this, but notice that my a and my b are the same sign, but different numbers. Okay, um, example three, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do 3a this time. 3a, instead of giving you numbers, a list of information like they did on this one, in example 3a, they actually give you the picture instead. So if I look at the picture, and again, I'm just going to give a real quick representation of it. Um, the center is like here, and it's going like this. You can look at it in your book, example 3A, page 146. So based off of the picture, it looks like the center is at 4 and negative 3. So I already know it's going to be x minus 4 squared, and I know it's going to be y plus 3 squared. doesn't want to do a plus. There we go. And that's equal to 1. What I don't know is underneath. I know that my major axis is going across. 
So I know that it's got to be over my a squared has to be underneath my x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many squares across is it. If I look in the book, it's one, two, three. It's one, two, three squares to get to the edge. So my a is three. So three squared would be nine. Um, the b is just up one square and down one square. So one squared would be one. So I now have it in standard form it's to get it into general form because they also ask for it in general form, right? My common denominator would be nine because nine times one is nine. So if I multiply this by nine, my nines will cancel and I'll just have X minus four squared. If I multiply this by 9, I end up with 9 times y plus 3 squared. And don't forget, everybody does, but don't forget to multiply the other side by 9 as well. So I get 9. So now this is just a matter of expanding, but remember that x minus 4 squared works out to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then um, plus... 9 times y squared plus 6y plus 9 is equal to 9. And so x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 9y squared plus 54y plus 81. And I'll bring this 9 over. Minus 9 is equal to 0. Now it's just a matter of cleaning that up. This would be x squared um, plus 9y squared minus 8x plus 54y and then 16 plus 81 minus 9 is plus 88 is equal to zero so there i have it in general form so i have it in standard form very messily up here and i have it in general form down at the bottom all right i'm going to stop this here and i'll make a second video on the second part of the ellipse